Hi, my name is David Chatkoff, and I'm a professor here at the University of Michigan Dearborn. My training has been primarily in the area of clinical health psychology, and I want to take the next few minutes to introduce you to this really exciting area. I want to provide a brief overview and give you some examples of the types of research that we do. And then Dr. Michelle Leonard is going to be joining in order to talk about clinical applications in this field. The discipline of health psychology in many ways is the scientific study or scientific approach to the conceptualization of health from a mind-body perspective. As an integrative discipline, health is conceptualized using the biopsychosocial model. This model suggests that all health conditions must be considered from the viewpoint of biological, social, and psychological influences. As you can see here, these components really are bidirectional with one another. And the challenge for us as health psychologists is to try to untangle the differential influences of each component, ultimately to help individuals who may be struggling with health issues. I'd like to take the next couple of minutes just to provide you with a few examples of the types of research that we do. I'm sure all of you have heard that uh, psychological stress can contribute to things like high blood pressure or cardiovascular disease. So let's start there and take a look. Health psychologists are continuing to uncover mechanisms that link our thoughts and emotions associated with stress to physiological processes that are harmful to the heart. For example, researchers have found that psychological factors can negatively impact cardiovascular functioning through things like autonomic nervous system changes, as well as immunological changes. These can impact cardiovascular health. Exploring how these mechanisms work is an example of the type of research in which health psychologists would typically engage. Another area that I find particularly exciting is the field of psychoneuroimmunology. This field explores the bidirectional communication between the central nervous system and the immune system. The classic example is how psychological stress can weaken some aspects of immunity and contribute to adverse health conditions. Likewise, changes in immune function can potentially contribute to mental health issues. Let me give one last example of the type of work that we do in um, health psychology. And this again is an area that I've been involved with. And that's to uh, develop a better understanding of the complexities of chronic pain. Current models not only include the mechanisms of nociception or the conduction of pain signals from the peripheral to the central nervous system, but also how thoughts such as pain catastrophizing and emotional responses become part of the central nervous system's matrix of the chronic pain experience. So in this area, we have a much more integrative understanding of how biological, psychological, and social factors all influence the experience of chronic pain. Whether we're talking about chronic pain or cardiovascular disease or the role of the immune system or other areas like how the microbiome contributes to obesity as well as uh, mental health uh, issues. Understanding the complexities of how biological, psychological, and social factors all contribute to health and disease can lead to better treatments and ultimately better patient outcomes. Dr. Michelle Leonard is now going to discuss some of these clinical applications in the area of health psychology. Hello, my name is Dr. Michelle Leonard. I am a clinical health psychologist here in the Department of Behavioral Sciences at the University of Michigan Dearborn. I'm gonna be talking with you today about clinical health psychology. Before we get into clinical health psychology, I wanna take a few seconds though to just make sure that we're on the same page on what clinical psychology is. Clinical psychologists are really aimed at understanding mental illness and diagnoses. So clinical psychologists understand what symptoms go along with depression or anxiety. They understand the course of schizophrenia. Clinical psychologists engage in assessment using standardized tools and measures to answer specific questions like 
does my older adult family member have a neurocognitive disorder? Or does my child have ADHD? Clinical psychologists can be involved in consultation to direct patient care, understand somebody's risk for suicide or violence, or even understand a patient's ability to make certain decisions for themselves. You probably know clinical psychology best though, through a clinician's provision of psychotherapy or counseling services, using a number of theoretical modalities, including cognitive behavioral therapy, interpersonal therapy, emotion-focused treatment, group treatment. Some clinical psychologists even engage in couples and family treatment. And I'm talking with you today about clinical health psychology. And I want you to think about this as the intersection between clinical psychology and traditional medicine, where the psychologist's job is to understand the interrelationship between behavioral, biological, cognitive, social, and emotional components of health, all to promote maintenance of health and prevent or treat illness and disability. Clinical health psychologists are also critical in healthcare systems to provide comprehensive care to the patients that that system serves. So you may ask yourself, why did I choose clinical health psychology? Part of this is because health issues are something that we will all face, whether it be in ourselves or our friends and family members. And although the situation is changing with physicians, many physicians themselves are not fully equipped to help patients manage issues related to mood, anxiety, or to adjustment. And we know that non-pharmacological treatments can work just as well, if not better, in the long run than some more traditional medication-based treatments. And for me, it was important to be able to make a difference in people's lives when they may not feel like they have a voice in situations like a hospital setting. So what are the kinds of treatments that a clinical psychologist would provide to somebody? Well, a clinical psychologist could help with a patient with diabetes for weight management or compliance to a diet regimen. A clinical health psychologist may help somebody uh, with a smoking or substance use issue, especially if they have comorbid health issues that that substance use is making worse. Clinical health psychologists may help patients with pain and the effects of a chronic pain condition that can be all encompassing in their lives. They could help a patient improve sleep using something like cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, which is one of those treatments that I was mentioning that does better than traditional pharmacotherapy. Clinical health psychologists might work in a, a primary care office providing psychoeducation about an illness, its symptoms, or its management. And clinical health psychologists might be involved in pre-surgery uh, assessments of individuals to help set them up for success, like a, in a bariatric surgery um, setting, or if somebody's gonna have like a pain stimulator or an organ transplant. There are a number of treatments that clinical psychologists could provide, but you may also be wondering, where does a clinical health psychologist work? Could be that they're providing urgent services or referrals to those in crisis through a hospital setting or an emergency room. It could be that they're working in universities, doing research or training clinical health psychologists. It could be that a clinical health psychologist is working in a primary care office, providing brief interventions and improving compliance or helping individuals adjust to chronic illness. <clears throat> clinical health psychologists also can be found in specialty clinics cancer treatment centers, pain clinics, women's health clinics, to provide specialized care to individuals whose chronic illness may impact their mood. And clinical health psychologists can work in general mental health settings on the outpatient side. And this is actually a bonus to have because like I mentioned, health issues, you can't avoid them for patients. So if a clinical health psychologist is working at an outpatient treatment center, they're providing quality, comprehensive care in that traditional mental health venue. If you're interested in learning more about clinical health psychology, here are a list of classes that you might find helpful here at University of Michigan Dearborn, including health psychology in and of itself, intro to clinical psychology, classes in personality or physiological psychology, abnormal psychology, clinical neuropsychology, motivation or behavior, or psychopharmacology. 
There is also a number of professional organizations that you may want to check out that highlight the work of clinical health psychologists, including the Michigan Psychological including the Michigan Psychological Association's Integrative Care Committee or the American Psychological Association's Division 38, which is focused on health psychology. I hope that this has been informative for you and you've gotten to learn a little bit more about clinical health psychology and what we do. If you've got questions and we're back on campus, feel free to give me a call or drop me an email.